In Proverbs chapter 1, join me in standing in honor of the reading of God's Word. Uh, thank you ladies for the song. I think there was two or maybe three folks this morning uh, on their way out uh, of the services this morning that mentioned uh, that what a blessing the music was this morning. And again tonight, music, uh, what a blessing it is. Proverbs chapter 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Um, a number of, uh, almost four months ago, on a Wednesday night, we preached about understanding, and there was so much there that we didn't, in fact, we left kind of on the, uh, on, the, on, on the cutting floor, on the cutting room floor, is that how they say it? There was a lot that didn't make its way to the message, and uh, I don't know if we're really preaching part two or just uh, some things that I think we need to, uh, to preach in regard to a man of understanding. And um, on Sunday nights, the young people are here. This is something that I think is so vital, so important for young people to, uh, to endeavor to be a man or a young lady uh, of understanding. And uh, the Word of God has much to say about it. And so we'll preach on this uh, this evening, a man of understanding. Father in heaven, I pray that you'd use me tonight. Lord, I, I prayed uh, this morning, we meant, it was mentioned in prayer time, Lord, I, I don't want my words to be preached. I desire that your words uh, be preached, that your word, that, that your word is lifted up. Uh, I have no help to offer. I think about the book of uh, Ezekiel, and I, I, I forget what chapter it is now, I think around uh, 40 or, or so, where um, it, it talks about the, the woe unto the pastors who who didn't feed the, the, the flock. They were fed. They were taken care of. The, the shepherds were taken care of, but they didn't feed the flock of God. And uh, I'm so thankful for your goodness to me. I'm so thankful that, that you've provided for me, that the, the, your people have been good to me. And uh, I, I desperately desire to feed your flock tonight, not with my words, not with my wisdom, but with your words. I pray that you'd help me, Lord, feed your flock to, to be used of you uh, to draw people closer to you, Lord, I pray. Bless the, the message. Uh, fill me with your spirit. Fill, fill each hearer with your spirit. And uh, we ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Few specific people are mentioned in the book of Proverbs. As we look at the book of Proverbs, the 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs, there are some specific names. In fact, as we look here in uh, verse number one, uh, the, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there's three names right there. Of course, Israel is referred to as a country, but we know Israel is a name. There's three names right there, uh, but there's actually a, a few names, specific names, that are mentioned in the book of Proverbs. Uh, but there's many personas, persona, I think is the plural, plural of persona. Uh, 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 there's many persona mentioned in uh, the book of Pro Pro Proverbs. Many people are spoken of in a generality. The book of Proverbs mentions persona that can fit almost anyone. That could be you or me or your neighbor, your wife, your children. To be one of the people of Proverbs, one does not choose who, or she, uh, who he or she will be, rather he chooses, she chooses, the actions, the attitudes, or the assets of those people, and the persona will follow. Uh, uh, for instance, the Bible mentions the simple, verse 4, look what it says, uh, uh, to give subtlety to the simple. Now that's not a specific person. Uh, like Solomon or David or Israel or uh, Asaph or one of, the, uh, uh, one of the people, one of the few people uh, mentioned, and I think Asaph is in the book of Psalms, not the book of Proverbs, but uh, um, one of the few people mentioned. It's not one of those people. You couldn't become David or Solomon. You couldn't become or be Israel. You could, however, be the simple, the simple man. 
You can be. Uh, how about in uh, Proverbs 9, 7, the scorner? How about in Proverbs 10, verse 4, the diligent? Uh, Proverbs 6, 6, the sluggard? Proverbs 29, 23, the humble? And on and on and on and on it goes. Uh, there are people that are mentioned. That they're not a specific person. They're a persona. And, and throughout the book of Proverbs, and, and let me say that uh, the book of Proverbs is, is a dear book to my heart, and I, I, I believe should be to every Christian. Um, every book in the Bible is, but there's so much in the book of Proverbs that, that as a young man, my dad would uh, instill in us in devotions, we'd memorize scripture and, uh, from the book of Proverbs, and, and we'd have all these, these principles that we learn from the book of Proverbs that guide us in the rest of life. The book of Proverbs is so useful, and we see that here in this, this passage, uh, to, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So a young man, if he's going to have knowledge and discretion, how is he going to have it? He'll get it from the instruction of Solomon, the son of David, uh, the king of Israel. And so uh, uh, we can look and we can say, all right, I'm going to be this specific person. Well, it doesn't work that way. We don't say, I'm going to be the humble. What we do is we follow the, the actions the assets, the attitudes of a humble person, and we become the persona, uh, we become that person, uh, rather than choosing than just to be that person. We might say, I don't want to be the simple man. I won't be, the, I'll, I'll take someone, I'll take a different name, I'll be a different person. Well, uh, if you choose the actions, the attitudes, the assets of uh, a simple man, then you're the simple man whether you want to be that simple man or not. Say, I, I don't want to be the scorner. I don't want to be referred to as a scorner. Almost as if we're picking uh, our, our, our part in the play. How many remember being in a school play or something like that and you're picking your part? I want to be this person. Well, it's almost as if you're picking that. But you don't get to pick who you are. You pick the actions, the attitude, the assets. You decide what, how you're going to live and the part picks you. Does that make sense? The name picks you. And so there's a number uh, of people of the book of Proverbs. When it comes to understanding, the man of understanding is one of them. When it comes to understanding, we find the book of Proverbs to be a book of instruction to understanding by the instruction of understanding. Meaning, uh, it's instructing us to understand from someone who has understanding. Who wrote the book of Proverbs? Well, God did. The, the Proverbs of Solomon, of the son of David, king of Israel. The Holy Spirit wrote it through Solomon. We would call him the wisest man in the world. By the way, and we'll get to this by the end of the message, but we know the story of uh, the king of Solomon. Often we'll say that when God came to Solomon and offered him, it said, Solomon, you can have whatever you want. It, 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 whatever you ask, I'll give you. Often... In fact, growing up, it wasn't until I was uh, in the ministry, I was preaching and I was studying this, was going to preach uh, on this passage to teenagers. And I said, well, that's not what he asked. He didn't ask for wisdom. That's not what, what, what uh, Solomon asked for. How many ever heard that Solomon asked for wisdom? We probably almost all heard that. That's not what he asked for. He asked for an understanding heart. He didn't ask for wisdom. He asked for understanding and the word understanding itself is found, and that's a word I mentioned when we preached on this topic from the book of uh, um, First Timothy, way back in December, we mentioned that uh, wisdom is the use, uh, the proper use of knowledge. Uh, wisdom is applying the, the word of God that we've received. Uh, so we've received the word of God and we put it into practice. That's wisdom, o obedience to the word of God. Jesus said himself, he that heareth my words and doeth them, Matthew chapter 7, is like a wise man. He that heareth my words like the wise man that built his house upon a rock. He that heareth my words and doeth them not is like the foolish man who built his house on a sand. And so when we, the instruction, the knowledge is God's word, wisdom is the, uh, 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 not, is using God's word right, being obedient to God's word. The, the right use of knowledge, the instruction of God's word. Understanding 
is on the other aspect, on the other uh, side of this knowledge, it's the proper uh, uh, attainment. Or, or let me read my words, or read my notes before I just start making words up as I'm talking. Um, uh, one has the faculty or ability to comprehend the objects of knowledge, generals or particulars, absent or present, and to judge on their falsehood, good or evil. So a man of understanding is someone who says, all right, I, I, have, the ax, I have the ability to receive it. Uh, I gave the illustration a number of months ago, it was four or five months ago when I preached this, um, that it would be like uh, a, 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 someone who is a cook, who's a good cook in the kitchen, who has the ability to use the materials that they have, to use uh, uh, the, the raw materials, uh, the flour, the, the, uh, the eggs, the, the meat, the whatever it is, to use those to turn them into a wonderful dinner. That, it would be the use of wisdom. But the ability to attain those would be understanding. The person who can gather the flour, who can gather the eggs, who can gather, and, and we think of that in more uh, of the sense of uh, not having a grocery store in days past where we actually had to, to grow or uh, uh, get our own uh, um, groceries. And so understanding is the gathering and saying, all right, this is useful, this is helpful. That's what understanding is, and understanding helps in the, the use of wisdom. It, you cannot have wisdom if you don't have understanding. If you're not gathering, uh, for instance, you say, well, this person is a wonderful cook. Well, they go into a kitchen, they say, well, what's here? There's nothing here to cook with. If they don't have understanding, it, you, you could pray for wisdom and ask for wisdom, but if you haven't got understanding and gathered the knowledge and say, hey, this is useful, this is right, this is correct, this is true, and this is, or, or, or this is not true, this is false, and you gather the, the right information, you have understanding, you can't use it. You can't have wisdom and use that knowledge if you haven't gathered it. Young people, listen, uh, I... I uh, learned from a very young age that was instilled in me that you want to be a wise person. In fact, the book of Proverbs talks about that, and we'll get to a, a passage. With all thy getting, the wisdom is the principal thing, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The word uh, principal is the same word that uh, um, the, the person who uh, guides the school is, makes all the decision. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the one that makes the choices, the biblical, the proper decisions in my life. But I cannot have wisdom if I haven't gathered the right knowledge with understanding. So uh, the man of understanding is very important. The word understanding is mentioned 156 times in the scriptures. Uh, in scripture, it is found 53 times in the book of Proverbs. So uh, 150 times, 156 times, 156 times in the whole Bible, one third of the times that we see the word understanding is found in the book of Proverbs. And we learn much from the book of Proverbs. And so tonight I'd like to preach uh, a little bit more. Some of this is a little bit of a repeat of what I mentioned four or five months ago. Some of this is uh, brand new. Uh, but it, I think it'll be useful, uh, um, uh, helpful, uh, not just for you as an adult, but young people, because it's so important that we become men, women of understanding. We can't draw close to God and His Word if we're not gathering the right, the, the gathering truth right. And so let's look at uh, uh, some things about what the Word of God has to say about uh, a man of understanding. Let me first of all talk about the benefits of the man of understanding. Look, at, and we're going to look or turn our Bibles quite a bit uh, this evening. We'll stay mostly in the book of Proverbs. But, so uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Turn, turn over a page or so. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. What are the benefits of being a man of understanding? Well, first of all, happiness. Happiness is one of the benefits of being a, a man of understanding. Excuse me. The world seeks to know, to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in every corner and in every way, except from the Word of God. And not only has the world and those in it, th those in it come up, uh, come up empty in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It has come up empty in happiness as well. Uh, um, it is it. 
baffling to a child of God when you uh, listen to the news or you, you pull up a news feed on your phone or on your computer and you see the headlines. And you see uh, uh, the headlines, and let's just pick one uh, topic in regard to, to genders. And you, you, you begin to shake your head and you say, Where, how, are there even words to, to be able to describe how foolish, how crazy, how insane that these ideas are coming from and yet they they they're often almost always uh, they're always referred to as science what is science what's another word for science knowledge and we're saying hey we have gathered this information and we've come up with this and you say how have you come up with that how did you get there and, and not just in that topic there's a uh, 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 a myriad of, of uh, topics where the world, uh, people have come and studied and they've come up and they're searching for knowledge, they're searching for wisdom, they're searching for understanding and, and they're not looking in God's word, they're searching in, in, in uh, the human experience and trying to understand everything by our own mind and they come up with something and uh, 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 what I'm trying to get to is they have some idea of what they think is a knowledge and it never brings happiness why is it that in the world when they're, they're searching for uh, knowledge and understanding and they think they've got this they, they think they've got this uh, a grasp on uh, science knowledge understanding wisdom why is it it brings depression why is it that it brings sadness? Why is it that it brings loneliness and, 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 and then uh, they seek for uh, uh, that pleasure, that happiness, that joy in, in, in sin and, and uh, pleasures that are only uh, uh, um, uh, sufficing or, or satisfying for a moment? Why? Because when you have real understanding, when you have the understanding of God's Word, there's happiness. Happiness is found in the Word of God. Happiness is found when we understand God's Word. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. And what happens is there's such a lack, there's such a, a void of understanding, there's a void of wisdom. And in that, uh, that void of wisdom and understanding, there is sorrow, there is depression. There is a, a sadness. But when we have the Word of God, when we have understanding from God's Word, when we have wisdom from God's Word, there is true happiness. Not something we have to put on. Not something that we have to uh, uh, have, to have a, a six-pack to get. Not something that we have to, to smoke or, or do something to get. By the way, young people, and I'm thankful that I mentioned a couple things that I didn't understand what I was, what I just said when I was a young person. Didn't have the I didn't get all those things because I was uh, 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 protected, shielded. But look, listen, young people, there will be um, as you grow older and. You get into this world, you begin to uh, uh, venture out. You have to live in this world. We're not uh, from this world, but we're, uh, we're not of this world, but we're in this world, and uh, uh, we, we have to live in it. Uh, you'll run across people that will try to share happiness, try to explain that, that there'll be joy and happiness in a number of different ways, in, in, in alcohol and drugs and in uh, um, uh, um, relationships that are, that are not biblical. Listen, young people, there is no happiness in sin. <laughs> happiness comes from understanding and knowing God's Word, wisdom and understanding. Uh, not only do we find happiness, look uh, uh, to the end of the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, or near the end, chapter 28. Not only do we see happiness, but here's another thing that the world seeks for. That, that, they, that they elevate and they say, hey, I, I, we want not just happiness, but honor. We want to be uh, powerful. We want people to honor us. We want our name to be in lights. We want everybody to know us. Look at Proverbs 28, verse 2 says. Well, let's look at verse number 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. For the transgression of a land 
Many are the princes thereof. Now, what does that mean? For the transgression of the land, many of the princes thereof. Let me explain it, and you say, I'm not sure that's the explanation. Well, then we'll look at the second part of the verse and we'll understand. For the transgression, because of sin, because we've transgressed, there are many people. There's a, a long line of, of, uh, of princes. There's a prince that sets himself up and, and uh, uh, he transgresses and he disobeys and it's not long before he's gone. And then there's someone else. And there's a long line of princes. There are many princes. There are many rulers because of transgression. But look what the rest of the verse says. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Meaning he has a, a long rule. He, he has honor. He's set on high. and uh, uh, We preached in, in teen class this morning uh, about uh, that, that uh, God uh, um, um, exalts. Uh, I'm sorry, he abases those that exalt themselves. If you exalt yourself, you'll be abased. And those that humble themselves, he will exalt. And, and when we, in, in our sin, exalt ourselves and think that we are something, it won't be long before we're put down and the next prince is put down and the next prince is put down. But when there's humility and there's understanding, when there's a man of understanding and he understands God's word, uh, it, it prolongs the state of his rule. It prolongs the state. Uh, and uh, this man of understanding, uh, his, the state thereof shall be prolonged. It's not one after another, after another, after another. There's honor. Now we, uh, we look in a government, and I realize our government is set up to, to change, but we look in uh, our government and someone's name is in lights for a short time, and someone's name is in lights for a short time. But there is... Uh, the, the state of someone is prolonged. The, the state of, uh, is, is prolonged because they are a man of understanding. There's honor. There's happiness and there's honor. So w the benefits are, are, are very clear. There's happiness. There's honor. When we understand, when we get a hold of God's word. The behavior, okay? So there's the benefits. What's the behavior of a man of understanding? What does, you say, all right, I get it, Pastor. It's, now you don't have to uh, belabor that point at all. We, I, the benefits are, are, are uh, um, and there's more than just those two benefits, but happiness and honor. Yes, I see it's important to be a man of understanding. What are the actions? What do I do? You said you have to choose to do things. You don't uh, pick the name, you choose actions. So what are the actions? of a man of understanding. What's the behavior of a man of understanding? I look back at Proverbs chapter 1. Back, back, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding, what will a man of understanding do? He shall attain unto wise counsels. A wise man, or I'm sorry, a man of understanding shall attain or, or listen to wise counsels. Look quickly, Proverbs chapter 20. Uh, turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 20. About 10 pages or so. There's probably about two chapters or, uh, on each page. So about 10 pages or so. Proverbs, well, in my Bible, there's about two chapters. I don't know about your Bible, but Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. A man of understanding is, uh, it, it, deep water is like a well or a place where there's water. Uh, you know, young people, listen. Having godly parents, having godly Sunday school teachers, going to a Christian school and hearing uh, 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 the Word of God taught, it's of no benefit if you don't listen to it. Amen. If you don't draw it out. Imagine being a man very thirsty and, and coming to a well and just looking down the well that has cold, uh, clean water and just saying, well, I wish I had some of that. You know, there are people that are, that are dying of thirst by the well, not literally, but figuratively, because they have access to a counsel, to biblical counsel, and they don't draw it out. They're not lowering the bucket in and pulling it out. Counsel in the heart of man uh, 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 is like deep water, but a man of understanding. Hey, do you want to be a man of understanding? Listen to godly counsel. 
Young people, when your, your parents say, this is uh, uh, teenagers, when your parents say, hey, uh, this, is, uh, this is what you need to do. This is, this is what the, the direction you need to, to go. I know that as a, a teenager, I, I think I've told you this before, uh, between the age of 13 and 18, scientifically proven, this is, this is true, between the th- ages of 13 and 18, uh, uh, an individual's brain replaces every cell. So from age 13 to 18, every cell in their brain dies and is replaced between the age of 13 and I think maybe 19. So if you're dealing with a 15 or 16 year old, you're really dealing with someone that's half a brain. Uh, they, 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 they only have half, they're not dealing with a full deck, all right? <laughs> it seems, and I've worked with young people, teenagers for a long time, I don't know what it is about the ages of 14 to 17, 18. Sometimes it ends, it's longer than that. But um, eventually they kind of come to their senses, some, sometimes 18, 19, 20 in there. But between 14 and 17, 14 and 18, it seems that they're, uh, it's almost like they've been given a manual that mom and dad don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> mom and dad have no idea what's going on. That, that they just... They are old and never been a teenager and they are completely disconnected and they have no under, they have, they don't have a clue what's going on. And it's the furthest thing, thing from the truth. And so uh, what happens is uh, they teach and they instruct and young people listen. You might be younger than uh, 14 and you say, well, uh, this is not applied to me. Um, you'll be 14, you'll be 17, you can determine, say, I'm going to listen to godly counsel even when I'm 16, 17, 18, even when I think I know what's going on. Even when I think I've got it all figured out. Come on. I'm going to listen to godly counsel. Right. Amen. The, the, you say, well, why would I do that? I, I've got to make my own decisions. You are a man of understanding when you listen to godly counsel. Amen. The Bible says so. You're a man of understanding. If you'll listen, you'll glean, you'll, you'll, you'll hearken to listen to obey godly counsel. Uh, uh, here's another thing, completely uh, 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 different from heart, uh, hearkening unto wise counsel, but Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 12. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Look at Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Uh, we see that a, a, a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Verse 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. A, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, we preached on the, the, uh, the, the title of the message, Shut Your Mouth, Shut Your Lips, from this verse. Um, you want to be a man of understanding, young people, and not so young people? Hold your peace. Hold your mouth. Uh, 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 harnessing your communications. Controlling your communication. Uh, be a man of fewer words. You say, well, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather just speak my mind. A fool speaks his mind. A man of understanding Harnesses. Now you say, now listen, the word of God is, it's, it's deep, but it's very simple. So, uh, young people, not so young people, you're in a situation where someone's telling you what to do. Uh, you're in a situation where a parent, a teacher, uh, um, uh, uh, someone in authority is telling you what to do. You've got two choices. I'll just listen and shut my mouth or I'll tell them what my opinion is. The man of understanding, the young person of understanding, stops talking. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, it's deep, but it's just, it's very simple. Young people, when uh, authority is talking to you or telling you, just stop talking and do what they say. You say, well, that, that, that sounds too, too easy. I know what, what to do. If you knew what to do, you'd be the adult. Amen. Young people. And not so young people. If you're in a situation where you're getting counsel, shut your mouth and listen. 
You say, well, I'm the one that's being told. That doesn't make me the man of understanding because I have to be told. That is a man of understanding, the one who shuts his mouth and listens, is a man of understanding, according to Scripture. All right, speak less. That helps us be a man of understanding. Uh, what's, what else does a man of understanding do? Um, look at uh, Proverbs chapter 15. We're just a few pages from there. Proverbs chapter 15. Verse number 21, and I'm almost out of time, and I still have two points left. There's so much here on a man of understanding in Scripture. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 21. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. The, the, uh, the third behavior hearkens unto counsel, wise counsel, harnesses his communication, heads toward consecration, walks uprightly, is holy. Uh, folly is joy in the world in foolishness listen foolishness says hey getting in trouble is fun in folly in foolishness foolishness is fun it's a blast it's great well a man of understanding says nope I, I don't want to have any part of that uh, I, I want to walk uprightly. I want to be holy. I want to be consecrated. I want to walk uprightly. Uh, what are the belongings? And I'll be quickly here. I'll be quick. The belongings of the man of understanding. What does the word man of understanding have? Uh, words of wisdom. Proverbs 10, 13. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. So he has, hey, hey what are the possessions? What are the belongings of a man of wisdom? Uh, a man of understanding, wisdom. Uh, what are uh, uh, um, a wholesome way? He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is an, of an excellent spirit. Uh, I have in my notes to, to take you to the book of Daniel and talk about a, 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 an excellent spirit. How many have ever heard? I'm trying to speak quickly here. How many has ever heard people talk about Daniel having an excellent spirit? The Bible talks about him having an excellent spirit. The Bible says, I think, uh, the book of Daniel says, I think seven different times that Daniel was, uh, uh, one of the aspects or one of the, the character traits that Daniel had was understanding. Daniel had understanding. And when we have understanding, we have an excellent spirit. That's one of the, the possessions, the belongings of uh, a man of understanding. And then finally, the begetting. How do we get understanding? How do we get it then? Well, we root it out of God's word. We look for it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, quickly. Proverbs chapter 4. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Now who is the father of Solomon? Well, Proverbs chapter 1, 1, David, King David. And so uh, the instruction, the law that he's giving him is God word, God's word. We get understanding from listening to those that teach God's word. We root it out of God's word. And then uh, the, how do we get it? We can take our Bibles. We won't. We won't. Well, let's do this quickly. Second, uh, first Kings. Go to First Kings. Out of Proverbs. First Kings. First Kings chapter 3. Verse number four, and the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. The, the king here is Solomon, the new king. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon, the, uh, uh, upon that altar. Now, wait, now, can I say that one of the aspects of the beginning of Solomon's ministry, especially the beginning of Solomon's ministry, was that he did what his father told him to do. David said, you need to do this, and you need to do this, you need to do this. And Solomon did everything. Now, later on, he, he allowed uh, his wives to turn his heart from God. But especially at the beginning of his, of his reign, uh, uh, his dad said, do this, this. Before his death, he said, do this, 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 this. And Solomon listened to his father to a T and said, I'll do this, I'll do this. The reason he's there at Gibeon, he's following his, uh, at Gibeon, he's following his dad's uh, uh, um, counsel. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, 
ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in the truth, in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multiple, multitude. What a blessing. You could uh, think about uh, Genesis chapter 15 right there when God said to Abraham, uh, um, you're, you're not even going to Abram at the time, you won't even know uh, how many people that you have, the sand of the sea. You won't be able to count them. Verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And God, as we continue to read that, if we were to continue to read down this passage, we'd read that God said, because you didn't ask me for wealth or, or uh, for riches or, or for something else, uh, I'm going to give you this and the other things that you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you a heart of understanding. Listen, how do we get understanding? Well, we get it from God's Word and following those who teach God's Word, but we also get it from asking God. Now, God hasn't appeared to me, hasn't appeared to you and say, ask what you wish, but He has given us a book that says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be, and it shall be opened. And so, what do we ask for? Do we ask, listen, young people, uh, and this is something we try to teach in our devotion time. Uh, do we ask, is our prayer requests always about me? Is it always what I get, what for me? Is it always about uh, uh, the blessings that I can get from God? Or am I seeking the benefit of others? Here, he's saying, I need to be a help to others. I need to judge your people, and I can't do that without your understanding. Often our prayers aren't answered because we are praying that they, that they, uh, uh, they would be consumed upon our own lusts. And so what we do is we say, God, I need to be a help to others. I need to be a blessing to others. It's not about me, it's about others. God, please give me an understanding heart. Now, I realize, I realize that God didn't appear to you as he did Solomon. But he has said, seek, uh, not, uh, uh, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Young people, even as a young person, you can say, and not so young people as well, God, give me an understanding heart. God, help me have an understanding heart. Why? So I can, I can, be, I can have happiness and I can have honor and I can have and I can have and I can have and I can have. No, so I can be a help and a blessing. Uh, uh, I can be a, a servant to others. Love God and love others. On those two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God, love others. If We need to have an understanding heart to, to be obedient to Him and to serve others. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your word that we have uh, to glean from, to, to gather uh, truths from. And thank you for the understanding that we can have from it. And we ask, I, I beg and plead, you give me a heart of understanding. I've asked for that a number of times before. God, give me a heart of understanding. God, please give me wisdom. I beg and plead that I could be used for you to, to serve others, to serve you and to serve others. Help me, Lord, I pray. And I pray that you give us that heart. Lord, give our uh, our young people that heart, that desire. Give our, uh, our teenagers, give our uh, young adults, give our, our, uh, our younger parents, our older parents, our, those that have uh, um, uh, already had uh, their children or out of their home, those that do not have children, those that are single, those uh, uh, that uh, uh, are, are beyond child rearing age, widows, widowers, Lord, I pray you give all of us an understanding heart. Give us wisdom so that we can serve you and serve others. Love you, love others. Lord, help us, Lord, I pray uh, that you would be glorified and you would be honored by our actions. We pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Head bowed and eyes closed. We won't have a... a
uh, raise your hand type invitation. The Lord spoke to your heart about this, this thing of understanding. You say, hey, I need this. Maybe you're a young person. You said, I have to have this as I grow. If I'm going to draw close to God and I'm going to do His will, I have to have an understanding heart. Begin to ask God for that now. The heads bowed and eyes closed. The, uh, we'll stand to our feet. And the piano, the organist begins to play. Brother Harris begins to sing. Do business with God. Ask God for I His direction, His guidance. My for understanding. For calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow.